Australian Supercars is a racing series based in Australia. And if you're wondering why you might have heard that intro before, it's because this is the second part of a two-part series. Go watch the first video. Oh, wait. Uh, you done? You good? We're good? Cool. All right, so this is part two of the Beginner's Guide to Supercars. First, let's start with the teams. How do they work? Now you might think, that's a weird question, why would teams be any different to any other motorsport? Well, there they are. Teams can have any numbers of cars between 1 and 4. Most one car teams are usually part of a larger team or receive support from a larger team, like how Techno have a partnership with Red Bull. In terms of team points, teams are required to split their cars into groups of at most 2. So if you have a 4 car team, like Kelly Racing, then for championship points you must split your team into two sets of cars, effectively making two teams. If you run a three car team like BJR, then you will have one team of two cars and one team of one car. Pit bays are also divided in the same way with the official two car team sharing one pit bay and one car teams often sharing a pit bay with another one car team. At most, two cars can share a pit bay. Every car can also have a different livery even cars that are on the same team. So if you're wondering why there are so many different looking cars, it's because a lot of them actually are on the same team, but each car has a different major sponsor. This means that there are a lot of sponsors in supercars, but it also makes keeping track of who's in what team pretty difficult. And to add to the confusion, teams can completely change the livery on their cars mid-season if they want to. This is usually done when a new title sponsor comes in halfway through a season. However, it can get a bit silly. Like last year when Nick Perkett had three totally different looking cars in the space of about four rounds. Combine all that with one car teams and the fact that teams with more than two cars have to be split into different chunks for official purposes and things get very confusing. So here's an overview of each team to help you get to know them better. First are Red Bull Holden Racing Team. They are the factory Holden team and they are the ones to beat pretty much every season in terms of both drivers and constructors. They finished first in the team's championship last year. Their drivers are seven times champion Jamie Winkup and 2016 champion Shane Van Gisbergen. Next is Dick Johnson Racing Penske, which is not easy to say so everyone just calls them DJR Penske. Or just DJR. This is the first major team on our overview to run with Fords, and new to 2019 will be the Ford Mustang. Their drivers are Fabian Coulthard, who needs to perform well this year after a pretty shocking 2018, and current star Scott McLaughlin, the 2018 champion. This is the major competitor to Red Bull, and the new Mustang means that this is a battle that you will want to keep an eye on. Next up is Tickford Racing, formerly the Ford factory team of Ford Performance Racing. Ford pulled their backing after they stopped making the Falcon. The new team, now known as Tickford, continued to supply Ford Falcons for every team on the field, including DJR. However, without factory support, the amount of Fords on the field has slowly dropped off. Until now, with the 2019 season being the first for the Ford Mustang in supercars. This is another team to watch. Normally frontrunners, their 2018 season was woeful, so seeing how they bounce back will be interesting. Once again, the performance of the Mustang will be front and centre in this team too. They will field three cars this year, one less than last year. Their drivers are Chaz Mostert, Cameron Waters and Lee Holdsworth, who is new to the team this year. Erebus Racing came fourth last year, so we'll look at them next. They started life recently as a Mercedes team before switching to the Holden. They were backmarkers before 2017, but recently they have been in contention more and more. Their number one driver is David Reynolds, with Anton Di Pasquale starting only his second season this year. Walkinshaw and Andretti United, or WOW, I guess, are another team with a lot of history behind them. They used to be the Holden factory team before Holden shifted its support for Red Bull. After this, Walkinshaw and Andretti took joint ownership, hence the name. They have fielded many champions over the years. One such champion is current driver James Courtney. Their second driver is Scott Pye. BJR are one of the four teams named after a person. BJR standing for Brad Jones Racing. Perpetual midfielders, BJR have never really managed anything too great. However, their recent 2018 season showed an increase in form. Hopefully, they can carry that over to their next season. Their drivers are Nick Perkett, Tim Slade, and the rookie, Macaulay Jones, who is Brad's son. Kelly Racing, who is also named after a person, is another team that has been around for a while now. 
They were the Nissan factory team until the end of the 2018 season when Nissan pulled its support due to the Ultima not selling very well. Despite that, Kelly Racing are still running the Ultima for 2019. They have four drivers, Rick Kelly, Simona Di Silvestro, Andre Heimgartner, and newcomer Gary Jacobson. Jacobson. Ja- J- Gary. Their fourth driver is Gary. The last of the teams to be named after a person is Gary Rogers Motorsport, another team with plenty of history behind it. They have also been perpetual midfielders, although they have had the occasional flash of greatness here and there. Their 2019 lineup consists of two drivers starting their second season, James Golding and Richie Stanaway. Now we'll get into the one-car teams. 23 Red are one such team, running in a partnership with Tickford. Despite being a fairly new team, they did manage to outperform Tickford on occasion last year. The driver is Will Davison. Next is the forever tight-budgeted Techno Racing, a team that has had to run a car with no sponsors more than once. This year, though, they do have a major sponsor, which is good to see because it would be a shame to lose their current driver, Jack LeBrock. He is only starting his second season this year, but he already shows a lot of promise. From the young, we go to the old, though. Team 18 are a very small one-car team that have managed to snag veteran and former champion Mark Winterbottom. Yes, if you're new, that is his real name, Winterbottom. This is another team on a tight budget, however, they have shown some promise over 2018. And lastly, we have Matt Stone Racing, making the step up from Super 2 last year with driver Todd Hazelwood. It was clear last year that they weren't prepared for the move quite yet and spent most of their time in last place. However, with the 2018 Red Bull Chassis as their 2019 car, we could see some big improvements from this team. So with all this complicated team splitting going on for points reasons, how do the points actually work? Well, let's take a look at it. Teams earn points based on the combined total of both drivers. So for instance, Kelly Racing, which has four cars as an entity, will be split into two official teams for points reasons. Let's say they split their cars like this. Both Team A and Team B earn points completely separately of each other, as if they were never even related. They don't share a garage or a pit bay. For the purposes of supercars, Team A and Team B are completely separate and distinct. They just happen to be run by the same people. So it is entirely possible that Team A could win the championship and Team B could finish in last place in terms of points, although nothing that dramatic has ever happened before. Drivers are also competing for the separate Drivers' Championship, which they earn points for individually. In both the Team and the Drivers' Championship, whoever has the most points at the end is the champion. So how do points work? Well, points are awarded to every finishing driver in supercars, not just the top 10 or anything like that. The maximum amount of points a driver can win on any weekend, except for international super sprints, is always 300. On most weekends where there are two races, this means that first place in each race is worth 150 points. Whereas a race win at Bathurst, which only has one race on that weekend, is worth the full 300 points. The way points work is kind of weird though. First receives 150 points, with each place behind first receiving 9 less points until 7th, who receives 6 less points, until 12th, who receives 3 less points. See, it's a, it's a bit odd, isn't it? I'm not sure why they use such big numbers either, but it does make basic points calculations pretty annoying. Just double these values for one race weekends. Drivers only need to do 75% race distance in order to be awarded points, so it's pretty common for a car to have mechanical issues that puts them several laps down, but still go back out onto the track again if the problem is fixed to net a few points. Well, that all sounds simple enough, I suppose, but wait, I hear you say, what about co-drivers for endurance races? Do they get points? How does that work? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's have a look at the co-driver rules. During endurance races, main drivers must be paired with a non-full-time co-driver, Main drivers must stay in their numbered car for endurance races, so two full-time teammates cannot pair together and let two co-drivers pair up in the other remaining car. Wildcard cars can also be entered at certain events outside of endurance races. This allows them to run an extra car with an additional driver. This is usually done for co-driver or reserve driver experience. Main drivers receive points as normal for endurance events as do co-drivers and wildcard entries. So if you head over to supercars.com right now and have a look at last year's championship results, you will see over 50 drivers listed, and that's because co-drivers and wildcard drivers also receive championship points. Honestly, the way supercars has set up some of its rules is a little confusing. 
Teams being split into different groups, livery changes mid-season, wild cards, it can all be very difficult to understand if you don't know what's going on, and broadcast events don't do very much to explain these things. It also doesn't help that teams use their title sponsor as their official name for points purposes. So in 2019, Gary Rogers Motorsport will be known as Boost Mobile Racing, because Boost Mobile is their title sponsor this season. Even in reality, Boost Mobile hasn't bought the team, they are still Gary Rogers, just with a new title sponsor. The equivalent to this would be if Mercedes F1 team had to change their name to Patronus, just because that's their title sponsor. Patronus don't own the team, they just provide them with some money. Same thing with GRM and Boost Mobile. This can make keeping track of each team even harder as commentators will regularly swap between their official name, so to speak, and their real name. Hopefully though, I've made things a little bit easier for you. Well, thanks for watching my beginner's guide to supercars, I hope you learned something. Leave a like if you did, subscribe for more Supercast content. My name has been Kendall from Beta Kendall. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.